If you guys are new around here, this is my weekly podcast called All, it's All Clutter. I actually have changed the name a couple of times now, but I'm sticking with this one. It's All Clutter because all clutter is connected and it's all clutter, right? Whether it's emotional clutter, financial clutter, social clutter, the clutter, the physical clutter in your house, which is never just about the stuff ever, right? All clutter is connected. So this is my podcast. I think we're at episode 23 or something like that. And today we're going to talk about why decluttering schedules fail. They fail. (laughs) So let me know, have you seen on the internet or even there's apps, there's all sorts of things out there that give you a schedule to follow to declutter your house. So if you've seen one of those, let me know in the comments. And typically the schedule goes room by room. So it's like a whole month and it says on day one, you are going to do your clothing. And then on day two, you're gonna do your jewelry. And on day three, you're gonna do your cosmetics, right? And so it gives you a schedule to follow. And there's a lot of problems with following a decluttering schedule. (laughs) So you might start like enthusiastic, you're like all ready to go, like this is gonna be the time that I tackle my clutter and then you get to day one and you open that closet and what happens? <laughs> you just can't stick to the schedule. There's so many problems with decluttering schedules. Something that I hear all the time is every time I try and declutter, I'm just shuffling one pile from one room to another room. So I'm not actually accomplishing anything. I am just moving my clutter. And moving clutter, it's true. It's not accomplishing anything. So let's break this down. Why doesn't this work? Oh, I'll also say Marie Kondo, she has a kind of a, an order too that she recommends, right? So she says, start with your clothing and then do your books. I think it's clothing, books, and then uh, her kimono or something like that, which means like everything else, and then memorabilia, right? So so she always says you have to start with, oh, I think it's clothing, books, papers, everything else in your house, and then memorabilia. Okay, so why doesn't this work? Why does it never work to start to follow a schedule? there's a couple of reasons that I am anti-decluttering schedule. Number one, you want to start with a collection that you do not have an emotional attachment to. And a lot of people have an emotional attachment to clothing. So if the schedule that you're following starts with your clothing, which the vast majority of them do, You're gonna start with a collection or a category that's a struggle for you right out of the gate. So you're gonna start going through your clothing and you're gonna have all of these mixed emotions because you're gonna have clothing that doesn't fit you. You're gonna have clothing that you wore on your first date. You're gonna have all sorts of emotional clothing and it's gonna be difficult for you to do all of your clothing. The other thing is that people have a lot of clothing, right? So we often have way more clothing than we have closet space for. We have clothing all over the place. We have clothing stacked on bins in the floor. We have clothing in the attic. We have clothing in the basement. We have a lot of clothing. So to start with an enormous collection like clothing is so, so, so overwhelming. It's so overwhelming. Another problem with sticking to a schedule is you nobody really tells you what your end goal is. So it's like you hit the ground running, but I liken it to that marathon, right? So if you've gone through boot camp with me, you know the marathon analogy. So like decluttering without knowing what your goal is, is just like running a marathon that you didn't train for and you don't know where the finish line is. The idea is that you dive into this project and you keep on going until you collapse, right? And all you've done is move a lot of stuff from one room to the other 
because nobody says what the goal is. So what is the goal? The goal is to live within your space. So if you're gonna start diving into clothing, you should have some sense of how much space you actually have to store your clothing before you start. But usually that's not talked about it. You know, people just say, go do your clothing, right? So it's just a backwards way to look at decluttering. <laughs> The, the way that you should declutter, right? So the way that you should declutter is you always want to start with emotionally easy, super, super, super easy stuff, super easy. And it doesn't matter what category it is because you want to increase the amount of stuff that you are moving out of your house. So you're going to do easy, 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 emotionally easy. Now, if you can even get emotionally easy and physically large, that's your best case scenario because you're removing stuff that takes up a lot of space, but it's not a drain on your emotions to get it out of your house. So what is something that's physically large and emotionally easy? Emotionally easy, physically large. Oftentimes our linens are a good place to start because most of the time we're not really connected or emotionally attached to our linens. Plus it's easy to donate linens. You can donate linens to animal shelters. Oftentimes you can put them into the donation drop bins for clothing. Oh, a sofa, Amy, yes. So a lot of people <laughs> start with Furniture that's broken. That's another sort of one that's really physically large and emotionally easy. The problem with furniture is that you have to figure out how to get it out of your house. So that might not be as easy to get out of your house, but that would be another one <laughs> that would be a good place to start. But it, you know, it could literally be absolutely anything. The goal is just to get stuff out of your house. The more that you get out of your house, the easier it is to organize at the other end. So you have to declutter before you can organize. And usually when you follow a schedule, it's more about the organization than it is about the clutter. And that's another backwards way to look at it. So it's, we're gonna organize room by room, but if you're not decluttering first, the organization is guaranteed to fail because you can't organize two times the amount of stuff than fits into the space. That is a math equation that's never going to work, right? So you really want to start decluttering first and foremost. For, for, for <laughs> first and foremost. The less that you have in your house, then the easier organization becomes. Now, think about this. Arguably, if you have really a small amount in your house, organization becomes something that's nice, but not even necessary. So if you have just a few things, you don't even really need to worry too much about organizing correctly because you just don't have enough, right? You know exactly where everything is. So if you can even declutter down to the point where you have very little left, organization goes by the wayside. It really doesn't matter. So just food for thought. We are like obsessed with organization as a society because we have so much stuff. If we didn't have so much stuff, organization would not be as critical as we think it is. So we should always be focusing on decluttering for a long time before we jump into organizing. Declutter, declutter, declutter. So Again, if you've gone through boot camp, you know that I love the men's game. This is such a brilliant way to declutter for a whole entire month. So the men's game, and I'm gonna spell that M-I-N-S. So you can look it up on social media. If you go on Instagram and hit hashtag men's game, you'll see that thousands and thousands of people have played this game. The men's game was created by the minimalists. So the minimalist.com is where you can find them. And they just take you through a very simple way of increasing the amount of stuff that is leaving your house. So the way that the men's games work is on day one, you declutter just one thing, right? Nice, easy, one easy thing, get it out of the house. 
On day two, you declutter two, th two things. On day three, three things and so on. And then by the end of the month, you've decluttered, I think it's like 550 things. I used to have it written down, but you've gotten rid of so much stuff and you've done it in a way that's very approachable. It's not taking all of your time. It's not taking all of your emotional energy. You're focusing on easy, 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 just increasing the amount that is leaving your house. So instead of following a decluttering organizing schedule, a much better way to go about this would be to do something like the men's game. You can also do the men's game, like you can adapt the men's game. So in boot camp, we 10X the men's game and we do it just for four days. So 10 items, 20, 30, 40, that's 100 items after one week. You could do the men's game with everyone in your family. So everyone gets one item on day one, two items on day two, three items of, on day three. So say you have a family of four and everyone is playing the men's game. After just one month, you have removed over 2000 items from your house. So just think about that for a second. Instead of following a schedule for a month that has no real like way to do it and does not, you know, doesn't tell you how to declutter or how to organize, it just tells you to do this room. Instead of trying to adhere to a schedule for one month, wouldn't it be better and easier and make more sense if you got your family on board with the men's game, made it a family challenge, and for a family of four, after one month, you will have removed over 2,000 items from your house in a way that's fun and easy to approach, right? So it makes so much more sense to focus on easy decluttering always before thinking about rooms or organization or anything like that. Another way that you can play the men's game is to do it in reverse. So some people like to start with the 30 items and work your way down. So it feels like you, you know, you can do 30 easy items, 29 easy items, and then kind of get harder and harder and harder as you go along. So if you don't have a lot to declutter, reverse men's game would be a fun way to do that, right? Um, other people do the men's game just in one room. So let's say that you do have all that clothing and you're not sure how to start letting it go. Grab a donation bag and on day one, just get rid of one thing. Then day two, two things, you know, you could do at the end socks, right? Get rid of like 30 socks, 15 pairs of socks. Um, that would be a really approachable way to start tackling your clothing without taking everything out and trying to do it all as one giant category. So there's a lot of different ways that you can play the men's game, um, adapt it to you and your family, do it with friends. I know in the Prioritize Your Sanity group on Facebook, our free community that lives on Facebook, there are people right now who are playing the men's game. So today is day 19. So they're removing 19 items from their house. It's so much fun to do it with a group of people. We had a group of 50 do it once. And I mean, tens of thousands of things were let go of. So it's a great way to increase the flow out. Now, the other side of this is to make sure that as you're doing this, you don't want stuff coming into your house, right? So you wanna make sure that you're not standing in your own way by you know, replacing what you're letting go of. Give your house a break, right? Unclog that house, let the stuff flow out and don't let the stuff flow in. And then maybe after you play the men's game for a month or two months or three months, then you can look at a schedule and say, okay, I'm gonna you know, focus in on one area now that there's so much less to deal with. And remember, we did not accumulate all of this clutter in a, in a small period of time, right? It took years to accumulate this clutter. It's unrealistic to think that after one month of following a schedule, your home is gonna be decluttered because you just did not, it's, a, it's, it's harder to let go of things than it is to bring them in. So. Okay, this is another good thought. It's so much harder to let go of something than it is to bring it into your house. There's almost no barrier of entry for things coming into your house. I mean, every time you go out, stuff comes in. But the amount that you have to think about 
letting something go before you actually let it go is huge. So stuff comes in with no thought and stuff goes out after a tremendous amount of thinking about it. So the idea that you can declutter and let go of a ton of stuff really, really, really quickly is just irrational <laughs> when you actually break it down. There's so much thought that goes into letting go of stuff. So you have to just, you know, think about it over the long term. I'm shifting the way my house is. This is going to take more than a month. And that is okay. That is totally okay. One little easy thing every single day is the key to lasting success with your decluttering. Do not hit the ground running without knowing where the finish line is. Slowly ease into this and give yourself some serious, easy, small wins so that you'll want to do it again tomorrow. Because decluttering is one of those things not too many people actually like to declutter. So let's make it a positive experience, right? <laughs> So that is why decluttering schedules fail. That is why they fail. They're not about decluttering. They're not even really about organization. It's just a schedule with no basis in the reality of the situation. I would love to take your comments now or questions or if you have an experience to share about how you attempted to adhere to a decluttering schedule, I would love to hear that also. So just drop it into the comments. And as I'm waiting for the comments to come in, if you are interested in joining Clutter Boss Academy, which is my signature 12 week program, that the next enrollment starts on Monday. Um, and there are three spots left. So if you can, if you are interested in getting in there, let me know. Um, it is the only program that addresses all of the clutter in your life the financial, the emotional, the social, the diet clutter, the, you know, we're working now on sleeping in Clutter Boss Academy, like resources to help you sleep because if you can't sleep, it's hard to declutter the next day. Um, so <laughs> let's see. Amy's been decluttering for nine months now, I think. Is that what we're saying here, Amy? Awesome, awesome job. Oh, okay. So Sherry says, I had neighbors who did the men's game. And when the kids completed their weekly challenge, it was 10 or 15 each for the children. They could put an outing in a jar they wanted to do. And then at the end of the month, they would go for ice cream or skating, skating or whatever was in the kid's jar. I love that's a great way to adapt the men's game for your family. Excellent. And then the end is an experience and not a thing. So you're not bringing more stuff into your house that you then need to declutter. Excellent. Vivian, so you followed a schedule and you found it helpful to set a plan to see what area you were working on. Okay, so that's good. I'm glad that that, and you shared it with your friend to check in and confirm. So accountability is also a huge part of decluttering. And I think that that's brilliant that you got your friend involved. Um, was the schedule very specific or was it just general areas? I'm curious. Lana, your husband loves the decluttering too, and you're enjoying selling things and watching your total grow. You're over $500 in three weeks on things that were taking up space. Yes. <laughs> um, so there, there's a little meme that floats around and I get tagged in it uh, every so often. And I love it. It's so brilliant. It says, so, okay, listen, this is a really good one. It says, look around. All that stuff used to be money and all of that money used to be time. So Lana, I love that you're turning your stuff back into money and at the same time, regaining control of the time in your life. So I love, love, love that. Amy says, I made a picture list so that I could pick things to do based on how I feel that day. <laughs> Amy, spoken like a true teacher. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Anne says, small projects, clean the laundry room and costumes while doing the wash yesterday. Small projects, totally for the win, 100%. Uh, Juliana, you have to do a lot of your decluttering when your kids aren't around. 
I get that. But they do love the space. Kids love floor space. Pets love floor space. Humans, adults love looking at floor space because empty floor space is so soothing when you see it. So the more floor space you have, the better you're going to feel in your environment. So try and get to that floor space. So, okay, I'm scrolling back here. Yeah, if you're not sure what the men's game is, there's several people who dropped in the comments exactly where to find it. So if you scroll back, you'll see that. Beth, we you love the we need to declutter before we organize. Yes, it's so, so true. And all that stuff used to be money and all that money used to be time. I know the first time you hear that, it feels a little sad, right? But once you embrace the concept and make a change moving forward, then you can start to regain all of that time in your life. And at the end of the day, clutter is insidious in nature because it steals our time. And it's all about our non-renewable time. We can never get this time back. So are you going to choose your stuff or are you going to choose your time? And that really is what it comes down to. It's one or the other. You cannot have both. And ironically, this is a little bit tangential, but um, ironically, even though we have so much more in our life today that is supposed to be convenient, I did the illusion of convenience in my last podcast, so you can go and check that out. It's on YouTube. Um, having all of these extra convenience or items that are supposed to make our life convenient have actually stolen more of our time. The average American woman has five hours less free time now than we had 30 years ago. So even though we're surrounded by convenience items, there's not a whole lot of convenience. Um, so Shira, while I don't like declutter calendars, I do like to have certain tasks on certain days, if that makes sense. Yes. So, oh, like deep clean the litter box on Sundays or laundry is typical Saturdays for me. Um, food prep on Monday. So those are like, uh, routine household tasks, right? Um, routine. Yeah. So the, what I believe with decluttering is that decluttering should just be part of those tasks. Like once you are living within your space, then you should have a declutter day where you just go around and make sure that there's nothing extra in your house that you don't need. Like I tend to see decluttering as the same as doing laundry or food prep. It's something that you have to do on a regular basis because you're bringing stuff into your house on a regular basis. So you have to declutter on a regular basis. And another problem with the decluttering calendars is that it's all about the big declutter, something that you have to set aside tons of time to do, right? It comes back to the time again. Um, so I totally get following a schedule for like chores and routine household tasks. I agree that's super helpful. Um, but for decluttering, I think incorporating that into your everyday makes more sense than tackling it just for one month. So this is another problem with decluttering schedules. It assumes that you can stop after the schedule is over, that you're done, right? There is no end point to decluttering. Until you stop bringing stuff into your house, you will have to be decluttering. Like there's no, <laughs> right? When you stop decluttering is when you get clutter. So the idea that you can just stick to a monthly calendar and at the end of the month, you've decluttered your whole house and you're done. It does not, that does not make any sense whatsoever. The only time you're done decluttering is when you are completely done shopping, right? So we know when that is. So that's not happening. <laughs> um, it's not one and done. No, exactly. Definitely not one and done. Just like you can never stop doing the dishes. You can never stop doing your laundry, right? You can stop doing laundry when you stop wearing clothing. You can stop doing your dishes when you stop eating off of dishes. So it's, you know, you can stop sweeping the floor when you stop walking on the floor. You can stop decluttering when you stop bringing stuff into your house. <laughs> it's not, so yeah, it's definitely not sad and regretful, but it, it is what it is. And the thing to, anytime you're thinking about clutter and you start to feel negative um, about your situation or if you have some shame or embarrassment, it is what it is. And we're going to let that go and make changes moving forward, right? So it's not about how it was in the past. We're learning and growing and changing 
And that is the beautiful thing is that you have the ability to learn and grow and change. And that's something to celebrate. That is not something to feel shame or embarrassment or anything. Uh, Jennifer, can you explain your program that's starting soon? Yeah, so it's it's called Clutter Boss Academy. It's a 12-week fully integrated program. You can go to clutterbossacademy.com. Um, and it's just 12 weeks fully supported. Uh, we have coaching calls, like six coaching calls a week. Um, there is a lesson for every area of your life. Uh, we have a nutritionist who works in there to help you with just basic um, nutrition changes that you can make because it turns out that what you eat is connected to how you think. There's a lot of research about this now and how you think is connected to your ability to declutter. So we tackle your clutter from all different angles. Um, I have a psychotherapist who works in the group who helps out with things like trauma and clutter or shopping addiction and clutter. Um, it's just, it's a fully integrated supported program for 12 weeks. So it's clutterbossacademy.com. Um, and you can also uh, just text me or message me if you want some more information. It's, there's no, I, as far as I know, there's no other program like this before. Um, yeah, Beth, I'm glad, I'm glad to hear decluttering schedules are not recommended. I've considered making one, but it seemed overwhelming. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> just start decluttering, declutter, declutter, declutter. Easy, 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 right? Um, Debbie, I've worn the same three outfits since COVID started, made laundry so much easier. No laundry pile. Yes, I love, so personally, I love the idea of like a capsule wardrobe or a really minimalist wardrobe. Uh, it makes everything so much easier. It's less decision-making every morning. You'll see that I typically wear like my black cardigan, my black tank top, right? Like, um, because it just makes my morning so much easier. I just, it's the same thing, you know, I don't have to put too much thought into it. And I get so, it, it's, I get all that time back. I just don't even think about it. Uh, and laundry is so much easier. So, oh, thanks, Anne. <laughs> um, Mandy, are you going to do prioritize yours? Do you mean the boot camp? Uh, the boot camp, the next boot camp is happening um, the week of June 22nd. So yes, there's another boot camp coming up also. Uh, boot camp, if you would like to join boot camp, it's $19 and it's clutter-bootcamp.com. So if you want to get into the next one, do it. There's also clutter buddy pricing. It's $30 for two people because it's always nice to have your support network. Um, let's see here. There were some more questions. Um, oh, <laughs> here's another funny story I'm going to share with you guys about how having less has saved me time. So in the pri or in the uh, Clutter Boss Academy, it, I, for some reason, I never created a lesson specifically about linens. So somebody asked if I could create a lesson just about linens. And I said, of course, I said, yeah, absolutely. So I put together this lesson, you know, how to declutter your linens, different like ways that you can store linens, different options. And one of the questions that came up, which comes up all the time, but, but I've never actually made a video to answer it, is how do you fold a fitted sheet, right? So I, I can fold a fitted sheet, no problem. But the issue was that I only have one set of sheets for our beds, so I never ever have to fold fitted sheets in my day-to-day -day life. Like the way that I, I, and I never even thought of how much time this saves me, but I have one set of sheets for the winter. When they wear out, I get a set of sheets for the summer. Sometimes I get two years out of them, sometimes three, but I only ever really have one set of sheets per bed. And it's, you know, when it's dirty, they get washed and put back onto the bed. I'm never folding and storing sheets <laughs> in general. So I'm on the video here trying to show how to fold a fitted sheet, which I haven't done in many years because I never have to fold sheets. <laughs> and it was just very comical. I'm in this like small office trying to show how you kind of like take the corners and like, you know, put them together. And, uh, and then I realized how much time and aggravation I'm saving myself by not having extra sheets. So just something to keep in mind. <laughs> uh, let's see. <laughs> 
Juliana, I'm scared to declutter clothing right now. I'm not leaving my house t-shirt and comfy clothes. I know. I like the uh I like the 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 COVID dress code leggings and comfy clothing. <laughs> oh, thank you. Boot camp is really it's a lot, it's a really fun week. Um Beth says, looking forward to the day when my 20 minutes to declutter is maintenance and not this large task at hand. Beth, you will definitely get there. Just keep on going. You're so close. Um, okay, so I think I'm going to go ahead. There's not too many more comments. I'm going to go ahead and end the podcast. If you are watching this on YouTube, or even if you're watching this live, if you would subscribe to my channel and like and comment, all that stuff that you're supposed to do on YouTube videos, I would be eternally grateful. Uh, so I'm trying to grow my YouTube channel so that more people can get this information. And my decluttering videos are kind of out of the norm, so I don't, they don't really fit into the normal tagging system. Um, so anyway, <laughs> if you're watching this later on YouTube, please like and subscribe to my channel. All of the podcasts are on YouTube. So if you want to see the one that I did last week about the illusion of convenience, that's a really good one to watch. Episode number 10 is also probably the one that gets the most views. It's all about different strategies to help you actually let go of stuff. So if you have emotional attachment to things and you're looking for different strategies, find episode 10. That's a really good one too. <laughs> and I will be back next Tuesday. If you want to hear a podcast topic, let me know. I have a running list that people are asking for, for topics for me to talk about. And I would love to add your topic to that list. I know somebody mentioned memorabilia. I do have some podcasts on memorabilia, but I can do another one always. Open the windows. It's a great motivator to clean. That's right, Debbie. <laughs> you guys, keep decluttering. Keep using this group for support. Do not stop. Get to the end of this process because your time is too valuable to spend another second dealing with extra things in your life. So do it, do it, do it. Thank you for dropping the episode 10 link Debbie into the comments. Have a great day, everyone. Chin up. We got this together. Bye now.